know how I wear the, the beaters underneath my shirt? Yep. This thing? Yep. I accidentally grabbed my brother's today. A little tight? Yeah, he uses mediums. He's like basically my size. Is he? Yeah. Why? He might be a little wider in the shoulders. Right? Even. Yeah. He's a little taller than or, me, probably. Yeah, maybe. But he wears mediums. So I got this medium on, and I feel like I'm. Yeah. Got a bodysuit yeah. underneath this. You know, I'm not going to show you, but. I don't go t shirts. I don't like not having one underneath. I know. We, talk, we talked about it. Yeah, I know. Is it your nips? It's the nips. Yeah. You know when people have nips on the shirt? Yeah. I just don't like it. Yeah. I think it looks stupid. So, you know, undershirt. I don't know. It makes me insecure. It just makes me insecure. Yeah. Like my nips are poking through my shirt. Yeah. I don't like it. Estrogen. You got too much estrogen. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we got... We got some we got some podcast stuff going on for you guys that are are back. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for listening, as always. Um, if you want to support the show, you can become a member. That would be great. Or you can leave a review. See, I remembered it again. Oh yeah. The the, the po- Apple Podcast, Spotify, oh, five star shenanigans. That's actually helpful. So if you guys haven't done that, that'd be sweet if you could do that. Um. And I think that's all. I posted the episode with Adam yesterday, today, today, this at, at midnight this morning. Would midnight count as today? Or does tw- midnight yesterday, 12.01 is today? Yeah, I don't know. Me neither. Doesn't matter. I'm Mid- in bed. Midnight is today. Anyway, so I posted. Um, so that's good cool. Good episode. Yeah, I think it's good. It's like the, covers the mental toughness type of stuff, mental strength, whatever. He played, he was a NHL guy, six overall to Chicago. And then he played for a bit, so he came down and did a podcast. The reason I'm saying it is because it's out of the regular schedule that I normally post the episodes. So I post it on a Wednesday. So if you guys normally look for the episodes on Sundays, it will have been posted already, which is today a Wednesday. So um, if you want to check that out, check that out. And that's all I have at the moment. Yeah, I got two things. Um, before we go into what I wanted to talk about, I wanted, I'm want i throwing this one at you here. No, not throwing it at you. I'm, I'm, I, I need to get this out for myself. And for the podcast, okay? So, I uh, first of all, I want people... This is for our, our regular listeners, people that listen all the time. Because um, I, I, I I notice like every now and then when I do check comments and stuff like that, I, I just go like unbelievable what people have when, when they comment good or bad sometimes. But there's there's been a there's been a couple where I'm like okay you missed the whole point of the thing by listening to a little clip so I'm I'm this is just more for our regular viewers or regular listeners um, I want to I want to remind people like first of all um, I don't want to ever come across like I think you you know me well enough that I, I I'm not a know it all guy I'm I, I'm just talking through experience when we do this podcast and it's I'm it's meant to be very helpful um, and I never want to come across like a know it all. Right, so sometimes if 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 words come out and it's like, especially in a small clip, where it could come out where in the middle of a sentence and it's like it comes out, and it's and it sounds like that's that's like pretty harsh. There's probably more to it, right? So, but anyways, my point to that is I want to remind our regular listeners because some people are like we've got a lot of new listeners and stuff. And I want to remind where this where this the genesis of this another big word here, the genesis of where this podcast came from is because um, for me, like a lot of people wouldn't even know who I am, but then on the other hand, I've got, we've got a lot of people that, you know, I talk to NHL scouts and OHL scouts and coaches and people all the time. And the, the, you know, they always talk to me about how they listen to our, not all of them, obviously, but there's several people that are very high up in hockey that listen to our podcast. And, um, and there's probably a reason for that. But where the where this podcast comes from is is I want people to be really clear where where I'm from is I'm 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 a, I'm my perspe- my perception on the advice or um, situations that come up are not just thrown out my opinion it's an opinion that is based on a whole bunch of circumstances and experience so one is as a player like obviously most people listening to this probably played some hockey, but I played at a high level, right? I played at the U-17s with Team Ontario with Shanahan and Luke Richardson. Like Those are the guys that I played with. Uh, played in the OHL, coached in the OHL, trained as a skills coach and built a business, training high 
level hockey players as well as low level hockey players and then coached youth hockey as as well and um I'm a dad of a, a kid that kids that played youth hockey and one that is becoming fairly successful in hockey. That's where my spectrum of information is coming from. So it's not like I'm just throwing out there um, just things that I think is the way it should be. Does that make sense so far? Yep. So I want people to understand that just in case they forget. And that wasn't to say, oh, wow, you've done so much. That's what, what I'm saying is that's where, where my experience comes from. So when I, when we talk about something like, like the other day it was, uh, we were talking about coaching and the clip that came out uh, where we were getting a little bit of feedback was, what are you saying coaches don't matter? Because I said in a, in a, in a, in a certain sense, coaching doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And so like, and, and I know it's mostly the people that look at a clip and they go, what do you mean? Coaches don't matter. That's stupid and all that stuff. It's like, well, of course it's stupid. If I said coaches doesn't matter. That uh, that's, that's ridiculous. Right. But my perception of what I was saying in, in a situation like that, I'm going to just do a couple real quick, is when you look at when we're talking about the investment you're making in hockey or as a player that has goals that wants to achieve and that wants to get to the highest level, that's what we're talking about in every episode. That's typically what we're talking about is that when we put the the emphasis on you need to have a phenomenal coach when you're 12, 11, 14, whatever the age is, like it has to be the best hockey coach. That's not necessarily true. If you have a good coach, it can help you, but it's not going to, it's not going to ruin your hockey. If you don't have an excellent X and O's hockey coach, what makes a good hockey coach, in my opinion, when you're younger. And again, this is through playing experience, coaching experience, training players, and watching my son and all his friends and all his buddies go through it, it's your youth hockey coaching as far as the X's and O's goes doesn't make that much of a difference. So if you could end up playing for a team that doesn't have a great coach in minor midget your draft year or uh, going you're, while you're getting uh, recruited for college or something like that, it's not going to – the scouts and the, the your future possible teams – understand the player they know that they're going to coach you so that element of coaching is not going to make or break you now if you have a former serial killer as your coach that's not a good coach like obviously man or if you you know or if you got someone that doesn't speak or someone that only yells and someone that's negative and he's got three kids on the team and two cousins like no kidding no kidding Yep. That's not probably a good coach. But if you have someone that can relate to kids at specific ages, can give them enough hockey information to, to help them be good hockey players and be a team and teach the principles of life and hockey, yes, of course, that's important. I don't know why I have to explain that, but I feel like my due diligence is like, and, and uh, I, I don't want to come across like I'm just right. You know, it's just coming from all spectrums of, of uh, experience. Yeah. I just hope like this encourages people that do clips to maybe look at maybe the five minutes before and the five minutes after to get the bigger picture yeah. because it's never just that. Yeah. And it's, and, and I, I want to be really clear, like my uh, mind and our intentions of doing this is not to, so that we look like we're the smartest people in the world. Cause I can guarantee you right now I'm not. All I do is in, in, in the realm of hockey in, in different aspects of hockey, I've got a lot of experience from a low level to very high levels. So when I, when I throw something out, it's just, it, it's, it's from what I've seen over, could be thousands and thousands of players, my opinion on that, not yeah. just one or two or one coach. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Is that okay to say? That's great. I, I just feel it's important because like I actually care about our listeners yeah. and I, and, and, and I have a real, I have a real, like, like even when like a lot of times people come up to me that I don't know now and they're like, Hey, I love your podcast. And, and it's like, that's really nice. And it's, it's somewhat humbling to me because, um, I mean, it's just nice. People are listening to a podcast. They're just talking about hockey and it's really nice, but they're getting a lot of benefit from it. And I just always, 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 always been this way. I don't ever want to come across like I know everything. I'm a smart ass. Uh, and, um, whatever. It's just, it's coming from a good place. I hope, hope yeah, that absolutely. comes through. But it's right. good. It's good to revisit this every so often because, like you mentioned, a lot of there's a lot of, of people that just started listening and maybe they they haven't been listening for a long time, so they don't know any of the any of the context or the background that we have or whatever. And I'll definitely second that. I mean, me me even more than you. I certainly don't want to come across as 
being the know-it-all guy and and that's a common criticism that I get from people when they <laughs> when they look at it because it's like what does this kid know like he's and I mean I look I also look younger than I am but that's besides the point that's people your don't health. know that's good yeah. to take care of yourself yeah. people don't know anything about me and so when they see a young guy talking as passionately or as as certain as I sound when I'm explaining what I think I can understand the criticism and I'm, I'm like very aware of that in the heat of the moment sometimes I get I get fired up with what we're talking about and so I know for sure I can be guilty of coming across as like blunt or a little bit know-it-all or whatever and obviously that's not the intention when we're doing this um, on my end especially because I am the younger of the two of us but I think it's important that people do know that and it's important to revisit it to remind people like kind of where we're coming from when we talk about this stuff because and i think the people that listen know that like no, the no, people no, that i i totally people get that, that consistently I, listen yeah. know that they got yeah. people that are just like trolling online or whatever yeah. it's like whatever you can you can listen to your clips and that's fine but uh, it's just funny there was one the other day that said don't listen to this guy it's like well that's funny because i had three three nhl scouts called called me last week yeah i know <laughs> i know right i think maybe my opinion has some right some so, weight yeah so you like you but, can't yeah. you can't we're not, I'm not even worried about talking to, to those people, but it's just, it is important to revisit the, where we're coming from, especially as we grow like week to week. And there's constantly like a, every week we have more people that are listening than the week before. So it's important that people kind of get the idea of where we're coming from. And we don't, we don't want to come across as we're just talking from being through it. Right. So you with, with your experience and me having gone through it as a more of a player, cause I'm being more fresh out of the game, playing at university level, whatever, could have gone on to do the pro thing and then having gone the school route and whatever, like the combination of the two perspectives, it's good, man, because people don't know the answers. So it's, it's good for people to hear solutions or possible solutions or problem solving strategies for the common problems that everybody has all the time. And it's, they're the repeat problems. It's always the same thing, right? So if you have somewhere to go where you can listen to this, and I was, I was talking to my Christine about it, um, yesterday, because sometimes she'll like fire ideas out that we could do on the podcast. And she was like, you know, I was thinking like long term, I'm wondering if you guys will be able to keep coming up with ideas of like topics and whatever. And I said, well, like the thing is, is that it doesn't always have to be new. Sometimes it just has to be a different way of explaining the same thing or addressing a specific circumstance now and how that plays into kind of what we think about things. It doesn't need to be a new topic. Like it's not, we're not doing entertainment right? We want people to, we want people to listen and be like, Oh, I have that problem. I can try to do this thing now to solve my problem. Well, it's, right? it's like I said, like in the summertime when Steve Yacht was here and he said, uh, just love the podcast, Andy. And, and, uh, so if you don't know who Steve Ott is, he actually, honestly, obviously he played in the NHL. Um, and then, uh, he was a skills, one of my, one of my clients, I guess you call him, uh, that I, I did on ice skills with, and he used their gym and stuff. And, and he's, he coaches the NHL now with uh, St. Louis. And when he came back, he goes, it's, it's, it's really good. He goes, cause I was always a player. He goes, and, and now I have kids playing. He goes, it's like, sometimes I feel like I'm going, yeah. I go, yeah. I said, but so it's like that perspective is like, there's a guy that played almost a thousand games in the NHL and is coaching and played for team Canada and yeah. all these things. And he's like, but he now, ha- I, ha- he now I have a kid. He hasn't been a dad. He hasn't been a dad. Well, he's been right? a dad, but not a right. hockey dad a hockey yet. Dad. And he's like, yeah. sometimes I feel like he's not working as hard as I, I want him to and stuff. But yeah. Well, cause he's eight Yeah. and your perception of what it takes to get to the NHL and his perception of what hockey is right now is, is totally different. And, yeah. and, and it's hard because, and, and I was like, this is the thing is every dad, maybe there are, maybe I'm wrong with this, but every dad, like, okay, i give you an example. I was talking, I was watching a game the other night and uh, there was a scout beside me and we were shooting the shit a little bit. And uh, I told him, I said, because my, my son's fairly physical. So I said, do you, do you ever notice that every time my son goes to throw a hit, I'm almost whacking you? <laughs> I feel, I'm, I'm in it with him a little bit. Yeah. And like, I'm, I've, I've played a lot of hockey, but that's my son. Yeah, you get sucked it's in. It's different. Yeah. You get sucked in. So man. as yeah. a dad, you know, like every little thing counts. Yeah. And um, so like, so anyways, with Stevie, he's just kind of laughed. He goes, yeah, I know. I said, you know, if, and, and, and maybe he took the advice. Maybe he didn't. I said, just let him play, man. Let him play. You'll know, you'll know when he's serious yeah, and when sure. it counts. So anyways, yeah, that's, good. that's, good. that's that. We're over that stuff. But anyways, uh, yeah. I just want, I always want my, uh, our listeners to know, like, I actually care. I actually don't want to come across that way and where the perspective comes from. And then obviously if you see us, we've had this several times now at the rinks or wherever, if you ever see us around and uh, don't be shy, come over and say hi. Yeah. love to meet you if we can.
Yeah, for sure. Um, good. I'm happy you did that. That was good. Oh, good. I'm so, glad. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good because we haven't really talked about it in a while. So it's good to get get the like you know center things back in perspective of where we're coming from. Even yeah. for people that have been listening for a long time, yeah. it's good to give them a reminder of kind of what we're talking about. So we don't want to get too on our high horse. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So today we're going to talk about a little bit about the hype machine. Things that bother me. Yeah. So you know what? Real okay. What what started this off mm-hmm. was last week I was watching an OHL game and um, this announcer play-by-play guy that has a head the size of a dump truck never played a sport if he did i'd I'd be shocked yeah okay and it's i i just it it irks me you know dalton prout and i were talking about this one day how i I was saying what's these what's what's the reporters like after the game and stuff he goes you know andy it's like you know you come after a loss and this guy comes up to you you know fat and he's got dandruff on his on his suit jacket coffee breath and cigarette breath and he goes so what was wrong tonight like they they're so sure of what they're talking about, right? So I was just watching, and two guys went to fight, and this guy goes, "Oh, and then," and he 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 said it so like he's done this several times. How the guys are just oh, they're getting their flippers off, like he made it like, like just like it's not a big deal, right? Got their flippers off, and I'm like, ah, oh, just, and, and I know they're they're just making the game colorful and all that stuff, but I like it bothers me, you know what I mean? So then it was that, and then it was last week there was. Uh, uh, Ivan is that his, Ivan Provorov. Ivan Provorov, Provorov yeah. didn't go out for warm ups. I don't want to go in the story because I don't really care. Um, but he didn't go out for for the warm ups for the Philadelphia Flyers. So then the next thing in the media, they made it so huge that he didn't go out for warm up. Yeah. Right? The hype machine made this into the coach having to answer questions after uh, this guy answering questions when he just made a choice not to go to warm up because of whatever. Yeah, and if the media doesn't, if they just done, uh, like, who cares if someone's not out in warm up? Honestly, who cares? Maybe the question is, oh, is he not playing? And then he's like, oh, it must something must have happened. But they have to dig and dig and dig to come up with a story that doesn't matter, actually, to anyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But it, the, they have to go into like the like you said, the coach has to answer a question. The league does. The player does. Other players are being interviewed about it. Yeah. Like it's this huge thing, yeah. and if you and don't then, answer it the right way, yeah, and and it's funny. Like the 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 thing for me when with all that all the media story stuff is when guys when guys aren't making it the story, like when the actual player isn't making it a story. So in the, in the Provorov case, like this guy didn't say one thing. He just didn't go out for warm ups. He wasn't he wasn't doing the Colin Kaepernick take a knee for the national anthem where it's like you're begging for the attention, right? Good point. So, so it's like it wasn't him that was trying to make the story. He just didn't go for warm up, right? And whatever the reason is, whether you agree or disagree, I don't care. That's not the point of. That's not a, the point of what we're talking about. It's that now the people found something. The people in media found something to dig a story out of, right? So, so this guy's got to now answer a question after the game about it and they're asking why this guy got to play and why this and why that the coach has to answer the league has to answer like people are asking for repercussions should he be from punished the should he be punished like all this stuff go for warm-up, it's man. like there's no there's no story here guys there's no story here like this guy made a personal decision he didn't go out for warm-ups it's none of your business what he's doing because he didn't try to make it a story that's right if he was begging for the attention that's go for it right that's a if, he's, if somebody's begging for the attention on it then go for it man go make it a story and blow it up and do whatever you want. But they always got to go find something. They got to find something to like turn into a big deal when it's not a big deal. And it has nothing to do with the, the subject of what happened. It has to do with what the media reaction is to all this stuff. Because if, if you talk, people that talk about it day to day life with a lot of these big hype media stories, most people are just like reasonable, right? It's not the extremes just happen in the media, you know? Or like the small percentage of super loud people that want to yell about something. But most people are just like, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever. Or they say a little bit this way, a little bit that way, and then it's not really... Everyone kind of agrees for the most part. You know what I mean? And so it's just funny to watch the... Everybody's got to go dig for something when there's nothing there. You know? And it's just... It's it's too bad. Like from the, from the perspective of the game, like I understand. I understand that you're trying to sell the game. So you need to make stories. You need people to want to watch. You need people to want to buy stuff, whatever. But when you're coming at it from like the player perspective or someone who's in the sport, 
this is the kind of stuff that can cause problems, right? Because it's not actually having anything to do with the game or the sport or anything like that, right? Yeah. Well, it was like we were talking. So this is just a different angle on it, right? We were talking last year. Remember, one of our players was asked to do uh, to 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 hold a sign and say "I believe in" or "I support" whatever. And our, that that player was 15 or 16 at the time, and um, I gave my advice. It's like just play hockey. Like you're 15. What do you do? You know anything about life, anyways? And what does support mean? Like, like you're just, you give a, a 15 or 16 year old kid because they play in the OHL here, put this and say, like, do you know what you're doing? So, so why don't we just focus on, on hockey? And then you had the same conversation and just say, Hey, politely just say, you know what? I'm, I'm 15 and I don't, uh, I really don't know anything about this stuff. I just want to concentrate on hockey. And that's what that player did. And it was like, saved them from getting out there. Now, does it, Will it hurt someone to do it? No, but if if you don't know even know what you're doing, it's like just to say things. Like I support this. It's like what do, what do you mean by that? Well, th- this is where I actually get upset now when it starts to get to kid stuff. When you get when you're like let's 18 is the age, but let's say 20. When adults are making kids do things, when they don't know what they're doing, and it's like here you just have to do this because this is what the team says or this is what the league says, or this is what whatever says, when th- it's nothing to do with the sport. So whatever, like fill in the blank with whatever social issue you want or whatever controversial topic you want to fill in. I don't care about the topic. I don't care about who goes which way. It's that you're making a, you're putting a 15 year old yeah, or a 16 year old or a 17 year old position, but uncomfortable, in a position. uncomfortable position, right? Inappropriate, uncomfortable position. And maybe some kids it's not because they don't think twice about it. And it's like, whatever, like I got to hold this sign. That's fine but the kids don't know any better. And you, as an adult, enforcing this kind of top down on kids to make them have a show that they have a position. They can't have a position. They don't have a, cho- they don't have a choice. They don't have a they don't have information. thought. They don't have any information about this. And I was just having this conversation with that grade seven class in here the other day. It's like, because there was, I, I heard an argument about the boys and the girls going back and forth about guys versus girls in sports. And they're starting, to, they were starting to get like, over the line with their comments and i'm like you guys are 12 like you guys don't know anything about any of this stuff it's like you don't need to be in a position as a kid where you have to take a stance on any kind of controversial issue that hasn't even been worked out by adults yet right like if all the adults are fighting about it like you're you're making a kid hold a sign or you're making a kid have an opinion or whatever and it's just it's not appropriate and it's not even what it's about it's not about that like the kids are just trying to play hockey man they just want to play hockey so you make this kid have a have a voice about a certain issue, and it's like, what does this kid know? So when that that kid comes to me last year and he's asking me about it, and he's just like, I don't know why I need to do this. And I don't know how to respond. He said, and I don't know how to respond. Yeah. Right. So it's like I'm asking you to do this thing. He's like, I don't know what this means, and I don't know how to respond because this was a kid that has a little bit more thought to what he's doing. And it's like, so now you're making this kid feel uncomfortable. Like he has to go with something that he doesn't know what the right thing is. Right. So it's just, that is just a great example of how irresponsible things can be with the media or with the adults that are in charge. That's when I start to actually get pissed off about it because it's like, you're now you're making a kid do it. You know what I mean? Where they're not, they don't have the agency yet to make that choice and you're forcing it on them. Right. That's where it gets to me. That starts to cross a, a different level where it's just completely inappropriate as grown-ups to make kids partake in whatever it is that you're trying to push, you know? Yeah, just because you don't hold the sign and say, I support, doesn't mean that you hate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it, do- <laughs> or it doesn't even mean against. that you don't support it. Right. Yeah. That's, you, that's what I'm saying. Right? Like, you might still support just it. Maybe, but it's I'm, just maybe not... I'm allowed to just be quiet and just keep my mouth shut so I don't get in shit. Yeah, right. Right? So. Or I don't have an opinion. So, mm-hmm. anyways, that's that was, uh, that was one of the things that... Um, um, that it was driving me nuts. And then like we look at, you know, so I was, we'll talk from the pro level down, I guess. Yeah. And uh, because a lot of people that are list our listeners are our kids and they go, well, that's has nothing to do with us, but it's like, this is how it, it just kind of trickles down. Right. So like you think about the trade deadline. Okay. So I, I, apparently I'm supposed to be having a couple beers in Oshawa in a couple weeks from now with a pretty high end media guy, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, listens yeah. to uh, yeah, apparently right, yeah. listens to our podcast. Yeah, he told me that. Uh, yeah. On so he's and he, I think he's part of this. He is part of the show. 
<laughs> oh well. Yeah. It's yeah. my media now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, doing his job, right? Yeah. Can't blame him for that. But anyways, here's one for you. The trade deadline. Okay. So it's media. Like, okay, so there is there's some interest in that. I wonder who's gonna make moves and stuff. But if you think about it, like the trade deadline, does it we you know the 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 big media companies out there start speculating like a couple months before and then as it gets closer to trade deadline it's like you've got all the media guys in their suits and they start talking about what they could happen what could happen what could happen well if my my aunt had nuts she'd be my uncle right like if honest to god like what the hell like of course this could happen this could happen but then they dedicate like 48 hours to trade deadline and there's the ticker tape going and it's like this major major announcement coming and stuff this guy could be going here and here and they they, so they think about this they sit at a table and people watch and i'm guilty of it i'm kind of curious right I'll, I'll throw it on and see who got traded because they, they get you but it's like you could sit if you actually spent the time and watch it like there's no action so this thing's going on for 12 or 24 hours and they're just talking and they're just trying to fill in time on air like God bless them and just making up scenarios for, for maybe a couple trades. It's like hype, man, hype to get people involved. And, and uh, you know, so it doesn't ruin anyone's life or anything, but it's like, so we're talking about the hype machine, right? Yeah, well, it's, the only thing on that is the, I don't mind, like just for me personally, I understand like, they want to be first to report on what's going on and all that. That's fine. Where it starts to bug me is when they start to throw their opinions on things. That's where I start to get annoyed because I understand they have to fill the time and they need to speculate and whatever. But when they start to think or when they start to say like, this guy is no good for this team or this guy doesn't get along with this guy or like there's been some problems between the player and the coach and all of this, we're hearing rumors about this thing and that's where it starts to get like now we're now we're doing a sales job like which i can again i do, I do understand I, I get it it's just for me personally that's where i start to get bothered by the situation or or even like you know in between periods when they do the analysis of the goal or the analysis or whatever and they'll be like what is this guy doing why was he over here and not over here and all this kind of stuff and it's like i understand what you're doing i get it that's fine but just for me personally that's where it starts to bug me because it's like, you're not there. You're not in the game. You're not the player. Like the guy's doing the best he can on the ice. Like he's playing in the NHL. It's hard, man. <laughs> you know, it's hard. I don't mind it. If it's so, like, uh, I don't mind any an analysis by like a Dave pool and or, uh, uh, the guys that have played and they have, because uh, what is it? Uh, chicken farm. What's his, uh, Ray Ferraro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's phenomenal. Like I can, I can listen to this guy all day on, he played the game and he's very intelligent. He, he actually, Kids can learn a lot about hockey if they just listen to this guy analyze a game. Yeah. Little things, right? Um, but it's like when you got the guy that went to broadcasting school. That's okay. Like, well, seriously. And, yeah. and the, but the reason the reason that it it you you can notice the difference too. Like some guy and some guys are really good. I'm not putting everyone in the same bucket. Like one of the guy. Uh, who, who's the guy that does the uh, World Juniors? The main announcer guy. Um, oh, Doothy? No, no. Gord Miller. Gord Miller. So I actually really like him. I like that guy. So he like I like his voice, Gord Miller. I like his voice calling the game, and he just calls the game, right? He's not throwing his two cents. He goes to Ray Ferraro, and Ray Ferraro throws his two cents, or it was Ray Ferraro. The problem that I find with some of the other guys that haven't played the game, and I'm not saying you need to have played to be able to analyze what's going on, but there's sometimes, and it's, again, it's not all the time, but sometimes there's in the tone of how they're talking about it, there's like a lack of respect for the players or for the situations that they wouldn't know because they haven't been there. So in there, they're just sharing their thoughts or their opinions. But in that tone is like, yeah, but you haven't been there, man. And so for you to be bashing this guy or, you know, chopping down this guy or saying what you think with all your sarcasm or all your whatever, it's like there's just a lack of respect for the player. And that's hard for me listening. And again, this is just, it's just me. This is just what I think. It's hard for me to, to listen to these guys and to get over that part of it when I'm listening to them talk because it's like you haven't been there, man. So like, like just be quiet. You're you're chopping these guys down, and you've never been a player. You've never you don't even know what it's like to go in the dressing room to tie the skates. You know what I mean? So just like take take some of the edge off the tone, and that's the part that I struggle with when I'm listening to these guys. That's why I don't I don't particularly care to listen to any yeah. analysis, but. Yeah. 
Yeah. Some are better than others. Yeah, I know, and, and it's necessary. I get it. But there's a line where it's just like crazy. It's like there's a couple other things I put down there. Like, like you know, you've seen a couple times where a coach in practice loses it on their team, throws a stick, and is yelling, and you know he's gone on a three three minute rant, and uh, it's hilarious, right? And that's fine. So when you put on TSN, like as a hockey player, no one's shocked that that happens. Uh, okay, what like what time today is he going to snap? Is you know more more along the lines, right? But the cameras are everywhere now. So if a coach loses it, and then they they spend it like okay, so they're on a three game losing. Well, no kidding, the coach is going to snap, right? But they make this into this long, you know, whatever, and trying to get the emotions out of the coach. And it's like he just snapped in practice, trying to get his team going. It's not a big deal. You know, the the guys need that once in a while. They actually need that once in a while to have a coach absolutely snap and look like they're like he's nuts. It's actually good. Yeah, and it's funny. Well, and the, I loved it when coaches did well, that. And like, then the the other the other part too is that, I don't know if you were going to say this one next, but it was the uh, if there's like a player conflict where it's like in the heat of practice or like, in a game or in a game, like guys you got yelling at each other, match going. yeah, or they or they get in a fight or whatever. Obviously, it's like it's not optimal in the team dynamic for two guys to fight on the team because i remember that if, if guys do that it causes an issue for a small period of time but then it's like for the next three weeks it's like how's your relationship with this person or whatever it's like man like we were just we're, we're these are the the hyper elite competitive people in the world that's who elite athletes are these are the most competitive people that you're going to find and they're going to snap and they're going to have you know high emotions when it's in the heat of the battle or whatever Guys snap on each other and then they move on and it's okay. But like it's you're like, talking to players themselves. Players, yeah, that's, right? it happens all the time. Happens all the time. So then it's like, okay, so now we've done our snap. Now we're moving on, but now we can't let it go because the media is going to keep asking us about it. Gonna or keep you see, asking a, us you about it, see right? a coach. I mean, I, I think it was maybe two years ago they showed a clip, and this happens. I mean, I'm just picking one out that I think of of uh, uh, Ger- 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 Gerard or Jared Bednar and um, Nathan McKinnon on the bench. And it was like one of these, you know, whatever, McKinnon, blah, blah, blah. And McKinnon looks at him like, what? what? Or, shut up, whatever. And then this guy, you shut up. I'm the coach. Uh, you shut up. I'm, a, I'm the player and I'm better than you. And the media pulled this out like there's major controversy going on with the Colorado Avalanche. He's lost his bench. McKinnon has no respect. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, like ideally, ideally, the coach says something and the, and the, and the, and the player goes, okay coach or uh, maybe a yeah but once in a while to maybe explain himself when he gets off but ideally that works but that's not reality you got someone that's busting his nuts and it's you know you should have did this well, th- well there was a chip in the ice it bounced over my stick blah 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 like screw you and i'm pissed off and you know i'm as pissed off as you coach whatever happens but the media got to drag that out there's this major controversy and my point is saying this kind of stuff is is when, when people look at it from from far, they're not getting the real truth. They're looking at it like, wow, there's a lot of trouble going on there. And this trickles down, like when, when if you can't filter through um, the reality of the game or if you can't filter through what's uh, uh, hype and what's what's not, what's a story, then, you know, when you're when you're going through the game as a parent, you know, you, you, you got to help your kid get through that kind of stuff is what I'm saying. Well, and, and then on top of that, if like if you're someone who is constantly – digesting the media stuff then you can start to project those situations into what's going on with your kid like on their team or whatever right you can be like without even thinking that that's what you're doing it's like you see some of these conflicts that aren't necessarily conflicts because anytime there's a human moment to the game at the pro level anytime there's you know somebody snaps or somebody makes a big mistake or there's some kind of a controversy it's like all of a sudden it's like that can't happen at this level. So now we need to talk about it, right? Forever. Well, how about just to take it down from the pro level down just a little bit. So a real recent example is um, is the ni- or the 2022 NHL draft. Oh, yeah. Okay? This is my this favorite. This is what I'm talking about, hype. And this, this is starting to get a little bit more relatable to kids because if you take the NHL draft and then the OHL, CHL draft, and, and then you go – the prospects and the scouting and all the blogs and all the stuff that's out there for kids. This is, this is actually really real. So, so the 2022 draft, you got a great hockey player by the name of Shane Wright. Okay. Great hockey player. I know you don't have to like him. You don't have to love him. You can think he's the best, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but what happened was he was overhyped by the media. Right. 
the the media are the ones that pegged him to go first overall. Okay, that's that's true. Um, so the media, because he was in an exceptional status, and because he had he had a really good first year, um, he's going to be your first overall pick. There's your first overall pick, and they set it right up until drafting. There's maybe a little bit of questioning just before the draft, where we're like, oh, you know, this Slavkovsky guy or whatever might go. You know, it's a one and two, and they're making big stories about this, and they, they, you know, ask questions like they did interviews about, you know, how important is it for you to go number first overall? It's like it's kind of a trick question. Because if you look like, well, it's not a big deal. Like, in my opinion, I would have said, I don't do the picking. So if they pick me first, I'm first. If I pick me 10th, I'm 10th. That's uh, nothing out of my hands. I played my best, right? But, you know, he's probably thinking with a lot of the hype that maybe he is going first overall. Whatever. Doesn't matter. But that's what's being said. It's like major, major cameras on him all the time. And it's like, oh, my God, he might not go first. What happened to him? Right. Yeah, what happened? But yeah. that's the that was the media that put him first overall. If you talk to individual scouts, like the Montreal Canadiens had were under no obligation to take Shane Wright first overall because TSN, Sportsnet, and, and TNT, whatever the networks are saying, he's the best player in the world. Or Craig Button from TSN on his list, or Bob McKenzie on his list say, Yeah, he's gonna go first overall. So you're not the scout. You're not paying the guy, you got no skin in the game. Well, right. and then on the back end of that, I remember while it was happening, again, going back to this is you coming from experience. I remember you saying to me, like you would talk, you're talking to actual scouts on the phone about him in particular, because the draft's yeah, coming up and it was a topic out, yeah. and you were just, and you were, you, I remember you telling me explicitly, like these guys would be like, yeah, like we don't, we're not sure. We don't know if he's going to be first. We don't know. And that that's coming from the source. Now that's coming from the teams that are going to do the picking. Right. So you watch, you, you know, you turn on whatever channel and it's like, yeah, he's first. Yeah, he's first. Yeah, he's first. But then you're having the conversation with some of the teams in the background and they're like, yeah, we don't really know. It's hard to tell because like this guy's really good. This guy's really good. And it's not clear right now, but they're making it out to be like, it's clear and it's not clear. Right. When it's you not. actually go to the source and talk to them, which right. you did, you know? Right. So yeah, I was just, uh, several scouts like, I, I don't know. Like there's other guys, you know, there's this, there's this. And it's like the guy didn't play like the year before. Uh, and and then and then they're expecting, and then the other thing with the with the hype machine is they're you know people thinking first overall, and they build it so much like he has to be like Connor McDavid, but just because you're first overall doesn't mean you're Connor McDavid. There's only one, and 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 now it's like Connor Bedard. Now it's like he has to go first overall, and and he probably will, right? But if he's not, I mean, some team didn't think he, that there was a better fit. Yeah. It has nothing to do with hype. Right. Right. I know. So, um, so the draft, and there's another thing, right? It's a big, it's a, it's a media market, right? Like it, it, you don't need it, but it's, I mean, I get, it sells the game. I get that. So, so the draft's coming and they got, you know, the, the, the camera going on each of them, you know, sweating bullets. And that's a, you know what, even if you know you're going first of all, cause Aaron, um, he's one of my clients. He went first overall and they let him, left him hanging up a little bit. Eh? So taking with the Florida takes with the first pick and they went, and he started laughing because he knew, but it's like you're still sweating bullets even though you know. So, anyways, they uh, they have the the camera all over the place, and then they take. This is what, I don't know if a lot of people know this. They they take Yuri Slavkovsky. So the there's clapping, then they show Shane Wright like, and they're trying to they're trying to say, look at how pissed and look at how disappointed he is, and what the heck's going on? Fans are booing. Like, you tell me what fan would know who the best hockey player in the world is. Have you scouted? Have you gone anywhere outside of the media to go and scout a hockey player? And you're booing your team because they didn't pick the guy that that TSN or the Hockey News said should go first overall. You're paying you, guys to do it. Do you remember on the news, like, seeing some of these Montreal fans that, like, already had their Shane Wright jerseys and whatever? What? Like, yeah. burning them, like, yeah. lighting them on fire, yeah. throwing them in the garbage, yeah. snapping that Just they didn't take Shane their Wright. Just losing shit. <laughs> like, so like, who funny. did you scout this yeah, year? I know, I know. But this is what people follow, right? Yeah. And then they take it, and they, they, they start making it like this is a huge deal. So he went fourth overall, guys. So that doesn't mean he's the f- fourth best. It means... Uh, whatever uh, Seattle, Seattle. No, what's the other team before there was Montreal, um, Phoenix, and Chicago, Chicago? I think it was, where the te- they they wanted someone else that would fit their team better. Yeah. It doesn't mean Shane Wright sucks. 
and he went fourth overall in the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And if yeah. Seattle picked first, maybe they would have taken him first. So, so it's like, and then, so then to even make it more of a story, they have to interview Montreal why they didn't take him. And then when he was trying on his Jersey, they said that he was staring at Montreal, giving them a, a glare, like just, I'm going to, you know, it's like, no, he was putting on his Jersey and his head tilted this way. And his face looks like that. And it wasn't, it, it, and maybe he was upset with them, but I'm sure he wasn't looking at them as an 18 year old kid. He was happy that he got drafted by the Seattle Kraken and, and good for him and all that stuff. And they made a story about that. So and that keeps coming out. He made a stare. So now he's got to explain, what are you talking about? I made it. I was glaring at them. And then I even got more to this. <laughs> then he, he, uh, he's questioned whether he's going to make Seattle, which is the hardest jump in the whole world to make. So if you don't make the NHL at 18 years old, you're not shit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You're actually a pretty good <laughs> hockey player. He, so he plays 10 yeah. games, blah, 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 blah. So then the hype machine ends with his, I think his first game back or his first goal, whatever it was, his 10th game, final game, or whatever it was after his conditioning stint was in Montreal and they called it the revenge game. Like, he's got so much revenge for him. It's like, honest to God, man, like, they make something out of nothing, right? So this guy's got to explain, like, either, yeah, I have revenge or no, I don't. He's playing a freaking hockey game. He's just trying to play in the NHL. That's It's not about him showing the world Montreal made a mistake. And maybe he had that attitude, but you made a story out of nothing. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. What's well, funny that he... Uh, did I go on for a while? You did. Yeah. It was New Jersey, Arizona, or New Jersey, Arizona, oh, by the yeah. way, on the draft. It was... Uh, First was Montreal, New Jersey, New Jersey, Arizona, Seattle. Back to back Slovakians. True? Nemec, yeah. And it's one like Slovaski? one two. Yeah. Nemec, then it was Cooley. Then a good and then uh, Slovakians Slovakia. had a good year. I know. Seriously. I'm just gonna go like one more thing and see how it's just to show how it trickles down. Um you know, you got the in the CHL this year, you got the top prospects game. It's actually tonight. There's a media hype there, right? Like it's a just it's a hockey game, but they got to get there a day early. They've got to do oh, the, the game. Prospect games tonight. I think it's tonight. I think tonight or tomorrow. And and uh, you know it's the it's it's that hype again, right? And I get it. TV ratings and all that kind of stuff. And they're doing uh this the testing on ice testing. So oh, really? this is one of those things. You know, I could be controversial here, I guess. But here's one of those things like that I would equiv- uh, put because I was part. I was I. I had a part in uh, in those testing things. Like I was, they I was supposed to get involved in one, and I'm like, I don't actually see it. So w- to sorry, me, sorry, just to you didn't really clarify what you meant there. So, like you don't see the the te- benefit of doing the testing or what it means with respect to your ability to this, play the game. There's the, the, you could take. There's some good points to it. So like what they do in these testing things is they have digital uh, uh, what's it um, RFIDs. You know what RFID is? Tags, and they can measure exactly where you are. So if they go point A to point E, point A to point B, straight line skating, it's exactly the the measurement of your speed. But it, within that speed, because you have different points of data, you can tell. Let's say it's a fifty foot skate. Mm-hmm. Within that, you could tell the first ten, five feet, ten yep. feet on your quickness, and then your kind of your explosive power. So if you have more speed taken off, or when you die off and stuff. So is that good? Might be. That might be good information. I think it's so. Where I think it's good. I think it's good if you're a trainer. That's I was literally just going to go into that. Yeah. yeah. So if you can see, okay, you've got uh, uh, information that this kid has got good explosive speed and that dies off. Okay, then he needs to have more strength. If, he, if he's got uh, bad takeoff speed, okay, we need to work on his quickness, blah, 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 blah. So there's agility, there's with the puck and all that kind of stuff. Um, for scouts to see it, it's like I, I don't know if that's really actual information. And it, and, and it's to me, it's like a lot like the combine when, when you do it before the draft who cares now, i'm not minimizing fitness right obviously i'm not minis- minimizing your skill work but at the end of the day what type of hockey player are you can you play in a game so you could have all the agility in the world you can right and or the stick handling or you could do pull-ups till they say okay we're sick of watching you do pull-ups you got a wide back that's amazing if you can't play what does it really matter and that's what i think the real important thing is i think that a lot of obviously for the, the combine, the uh, the draft combine, I think that's very important because they get a lot of interviews and they can get you see some stuff on a player. And then I, and it's not all bad, but I think it's more of a marketing thing and get a chance to see interviews. Yeah, that's what I was uh, just to stick on that testing thing for a second. That's where people don't 
people don't remember that the difference is between training and playing, right? So if your kid is really good at doing their takeoffs, but they have no idea how to apply that effectively to be useful in a game, then they're not good at the game now, right? So it's good for training because you can it helps you identify and address your deficiencies and all that's great and you can work on it. But in terms of what do your testing results mean about your ability to play hockey, the answer is not much, right? Because you got you got guys that aren't great skaters, but they still can score X number of goals every year. Or guys that are super, super small, super light, but they're still really effective players in the NHL. Guys that are big and slow or don't have the best shot, but they can really make plays. It's so it's like it's not like if you're a track athlete, you do your running time and then your race is running. You know, it's not the same. So if you if you're training as a sprinter, when you train different elements of your sprinting, that is directly feeding into your actual race performance, right? Hockey and most most sports aren't like that. And, and, and maybe yeah, like football, they based on height, size, speed, quickness, all that stuff. They they say okay, this is the position you have to play because you right. can never survive somewhere else. And maybe yeah, this is where I, I don't know everything. Because I'm only smart to a certain point. Maybe there's going to be some nerd or some people out there that figure out a way that if you are six foot one and you have this speed and this agility, that you will be a very effective left winger or whatever. Maybe at some point that's going to happen, but right now that's not really the way. Well, it goes. I mean, there, th- that's a good point because there are yeah. there are what's the what's the baseball movie? Um, Moneyball is that what it is? The Maybe. analytics guy. The guy that's really into the analytics and he figured yeah, yeah, out he's all money how to ball. get, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's a good example of that. That's true. Right. If you, if you, yeah, you never you say can, never. Yeah. You but. can get into all the, all the specific details of exactly how guys perform. And maybe that helps you predict where they should be or what they should be doing. But for the most part, one is a sport like hockey where, where there's, you don't like you have a position, but you have a lot of jobs. You know, when you're in football, it's not really the same type of sport because if you're the wide receiver, it's like, this is what you do and you do this every time, right? You're, do, you're running a certain route. This is what you have to do. There's not a lot of change up where if you're a forward on, if you're a forward in, in uh, hockey, maybe you have to play center for a shift or maybe you end up on the back end because somebody gets caught or whatever. So there's a lot of variation in the skills that you need. So the, the testing stuff doesn't doesn't really apply as well to what you're going to do on the ice in terms of your performance in hockey, right? And sports that are like hockey, that's kind of would be similar. So, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's that's an important point to make. But anyways, go back to you were talking about the um, CHL top prospects game. They have the on-ice testing tonight, and then you're getting into the hype on that. Yeah, so there's all the hype on that, and it's like, it's good, it's good. Like, But, but like, whatever. Yeah. Like, if it, with, with the point is that the players have to just, like, if you get invited to this, it's great. Yeah. And again, it's great, but it's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't mean you can't play in the NHL, and it doesn't mean that you're going to play in the NHL. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. And and, and from uh, from the hype, it's, you know, if you take an 18-year-old kid, it's it's easy to get caught up in the hype, and you hopefully, you know, you, you train as a parent and as coaches and the people you surround yourself with, they train you to not get all – um all fooled by the glitz and the glamour and the the, the big game and the big one event yeah. because it's just one event. You know, you got to train yourself to just focus on the moment and be who you are every day, every time you yeah. step on the ice. I want to kind of go into a little bit of why it's a problem as we start to get down to, it'll be more apparent where it can be a problem with the youth hockey stuff because the story that you were telling me yesterday was you read the an article about um, somebody who was projecting next year's draft list. So it was a guy, it was an article about the Windsor team and how this guy thinks that they might, could have, they potentially could have three guys in the top 10 of the NHL draft next year. So three, th- three guys on the same team going in the top 10 uh, in the NHL draft. Maybe that's possible, but what do you know, right? So the problem, the problem, the reason that's an issue is because like we said, like you want to sell the game and you're trying to create stories and get some speculation and whatever so that there's something for people to look forward to and pay attention to and whatever. And that's one thing. But the problem as you start to get down the ranks is the kids are now seeing that, right? The kids are now seeing that. So for example, to use a guy from Guelph, Cam at the start of last year was ranked top five or yeah, something like say. that. That's what they say. Okay. He's, all, he's like an awesome hockey player. So he was, he was ranked to be as a top five, right? And then the next ranking comes out 
and now he's 30 something or whatever in the last ranking so it's so it's like okay so now if i'm that kid that has to see that as a kid where maybe they don't have the mental tools yet to deal with yeah this is just a article or this is just a whatever where you know it's easy for us to sit here as adults with some maturity and say yeah yeah it's just the hype man it's just the hype you don't have to listen to that but when you're a kid and you're in the middle of it and you're like man look at what all these people are saying about me like look at it no like they think I'm no good they think I they think that I've fallen way off track or whatever whatever the case is right so now with these kids that you know this guy's talking about in Windsor if they don't do that if it starts to build where it's like there's an expectation that they're a top 10 pick now you have a 17 year old kid if he doesn't live up to that which is a completely outside imposed expectation it has nothing to do with what teams are saying it has nothing to do with what that his his team is saying that they expect of him has nothing to do with any of that. Now it's a completely outside pressure that doesn't need to be there on a kid, right? So moving into next season now, if these guys are paying attention to that stuff, now that can get into their head, which can actually end up affecting their performance because that's one of the most common things we hear about when guys are struggling with their mental game. It's like they're getting in their own head and they're thinking about this and thinking about that and whatever, and it's starting to affect how they perform. And that's where it starts to be an issue. So as we start to do the trickle down here and we're getting into more the youth level, this is why this stuff can actually turn into being an issue, right? It's not that you, you think about it at the pro level and it's like, yeah, these guys are grown ups. It's their job. They're in the spotlight. It's part of the deal. But as if you continue those things all the way down or you have that trickle down effect, like you said, now it's affecting kids in a way that's not necessarily beneficial and might actually be harmful to what they're trying to do, right? Yeah. Well, so you want to hear something interesting about what you just said. Yeah. Is that person, and I'm not cutting the guy up, mm -hmm. but this is where people have to, like the youth, the hype machine, and people selling you shit, this is where it comes into play. So that same person, he, and he might do a good job scouting, but he, he also works for an independent scouting service. Okay? So when you read that article, there's three people that could be drafted in the first top in the top ten. Wow, interesting. To get all of my thoughts and current projections or latest scouting list, subscribe to this, and then you could have all the information. And that hype machine went from a nice, interesting article for oh wow, that's interesting. These three kids might get drafted in the first ten picks. To like, if you look into it, it's like, well, I do want to find out more, and because it's also like, and to find out the OHL 2024 or what, what year are we in? 2023. 2023 OHL draft and the 2009 OHL rankings. Click here for a subscription of like, I don't know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is. And as a, as a dad, that's like, you think your kid's a pretty good player or, or oh, I'd be interested to see this. And I start buying the subscription and all of a sudden you're, you're told how great. And if you subscribe, what do you think the chances of your name getting into a list? Oh, all of a sudden, yeah, 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 your kid's uh, rated here. Because we had that when uh, when uh, my kid and his group was going through it. People were like, oh, he, these, this scouting service was talking about this guy and this guy. And this guy's ranked here and here. I'm like, what are you talking about? So we got a, a notice on one. And I'm like, it says subscribe, guys. <laughs> so it means nothing. But if you subscribe, then they write a nice thing about you. And people buy into that. Because now you got my, look at, look at my kids getting noticed. Who does that help? I don't know. But but this is like, this is the machine. This is the hype machine that starts. This is actually the youth hockey, how it filters through. Yeah. And we, I mean, there was, we were just talking to a couple of kids last night and they were saying a guy, a guy on their team, they paid somebody to find out where his kid was ranked. Right. And this kid is uh, whatever, 12, 13, 14, somewhere in there. Yeah. I'd say he's 13 or 14. So yeah, I don't even think he's that old, but anyways, so comes to find out that oh my kids top three in the world in in canada and oh, maybe the world. And, no and maybe the world so he's ranked third in all of canada he might be third in the world because they don't know if they can find a better goalie and it's like where'd you look <laughs> right how do you know how do you know how do you know who the slovak goalie is how do you know who the guy is coming from austria how do you know who the goalie is that is playing in some obscure place in Russia that you've never heard of. It's like th this is the this is what happens, right? And how do you know you're not going to be taller than five foot one and a half? Yeah. What if you don't? What if puberty hits you and it doesn't do much? You know. 
So it's like these are this is where now th- this is the point of this episode. Yeah, is because now we went. We took the long way. Yeah, we took the long way, but now this, this is entertainment value. Yeah, entertain. Yeah, uh-huh. we're the hype machine. So this is what this is why it starts to be a problem because you you start to be conditioned at the highest level when you're paying attention to the pro stuff, and you think it's actually valuable. Now you come down to junior hockey. Now you think it's valuable. Then you drop it down to minor hockey, and you feel like these principles would still apply. Well. If this guy's saying this, he puts out a list every year. Like it must be pretty accurate. But if you if you find like we got a kid that we train right now that didn't get drafted last year, he's an 06, and he's unreal. And he's he's now got Division One offers, OHL teams all over him. Didn't even get drafted. He was ranked third to fifth round last year to go in the OHL draft. Didn't get a sniff, but he's actually a really good player, and he's still get now now he's getting found. Right. So what did it feel for him being ranked third to fifth by whoever and wherever only to not be drafted? You know, and I had the, I had the same story with a guy that I played with. I will never forget this the rest of my life. I've said this before on the podcast. My I wasn't ranked to get drafted, ranked, whatever that means. My one of my closest friend at the time was he was ranked to go somewhere between whatever it was, four and seven, let's say somewhere in there. So. It's he's pretty sure he's getting drafted, okay? Which he shouldn't be, but he was pretty sure. The family was pretty sure. So I went to his house, and we were waiting for his name to be called. We're watching the rounds. Fourth round comes and goes, nothing. Fifth round comes and goes, nothing. Sixth round, nothing. Seventh round. So now this is like, okay, I'm going to go in the seventh round because they said four to they They said four to seven. Seventh round comes and goes, nothing. Eighth round, nothing. Ninth, nothing. Tenth, nothing. He ended up going between 10 and 12. I forget what round it ended up being. And after the eighth round, he stopped watching. He was devastated. We went downstairs and started playing mini sticks because he was like, this is crap, like whatever. And you could see in his face. And here I am. I'm sitting, This he ends up getting drafted between 10 and 12, whatever it was. And it's like, dude, that's unreal. Like you got drafted. Like that's great. And yes, he was happy he got drafted. And yes, he was excited about, you know, his possibility of moving up, moving forward. But he was more disappointed. I remember seeing the body language. I remember seeing the face, just like disappointment, man, for no reason, because somebody told him that he was four to seven or whatever. Whereas if he goes into it, like, yeah, I might get drafted. Now there's no expectation, right? But somebody put a label on it. Somebody said, four to seven, three to five, whatever the situation is for whatever player, right? And so it's easy to get caught up in the noise. And now it actually negatively negatively impacted a real person in real life. And it could have been a good day. Yeah, it could have been a great day. That's where where people just don't have uh, a really good pulse on where they are. Like like, this is why it's in in youth hockey. That's why it drives me nuts when people, parents mostly, because kids are going to be kids, right? Bullshit a little bit, brag a little bit, you know take whatever they can, you know, you know, if someone says that they're the best hockey player they've ever seen in the history of the world, they're going to take that with like someone told me that, like, I'm actually the best, you know, they're kids. But when adults look at their kids and they, they project bullshit, but not, I don't even know if it's bullshit. They project like, what do you, what do you, if someone says like, you're a good player and you, you, know, you read one of these things, and you know, uh, yeah, anywhere from the, third to seventh round like that's a big gap that's a big gap and it's like where does this info like as an adult where does this information come from who are these people why are they doing it if there's a subscription then you might want to say okay maybe it's kind of a little fluffy here um but like when you watch when you watch if you're playing on ontario or whatever province or state you're in if you're watching and your 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 son's not like top 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 like that maybe you got to say well i don't know about that there's a lot of hockey players out there yeah. right so yeah and that's what i think that's kind of what, what i'm getting at like the from the parenting side of it as the grown-ups like the kids are going to get sucked in man right like you can't there's nothing you can do like when kids are seeing stuff online they don't know what to believe what's true what's not as the grown-ups you have to have a good pulse on what's actually going on so that you can prepare them for dealing with this stuff right so like you said if a kid is if a kid finds out oh i'm draft i'm ranked to to go somewhere here but every tournament you go to your kid blends in right or he's one of the better players but not necessarily one of the top players 
just a good player. It's like maybe we should be able to buffer that a little bit for the kid instead of buying in. And a lot of parents would buy in, man. They start, they get caught up just as much as the kid does, right? They get all crazy about it. And it's not good for the kid because you're just, you're starting to set them up for, for disappointments that don't need to be there just because you heard a story or just because somebody through the grapevine told you this, or I talked to this guy and this guy said this because the actual people that make the decisions, they don't talk to, they don't talk to anybody that's going to be spreading the, the juice about it. Right. Because most guys, like most scouts and most teams, they're trying to keep their cards tight, right? Because they want to get the good guy. So they're not just out spewing about who's good, right? They call, they call people that are in the industry to talk to them. And the trickle down isn't going to be that widely known. It's not going to be very commonplace information. So, you know, any dad you talk to or any mom or any team manager that says they know all the information about what's going on, they have no idea. They don't know, Right. Even, and even if you talk to, if they have, let's say they have an inside source with one of the teams, like they know somebody that's a part of the team personnel. Now you're getting the, you're getting one perspective from one person on one team, right? And that has very, very little to do with the big picture of what's actually going to happen when it's, let's say the OHL draft or whatever, right? Yeah. So Well, it's even. So like I talk to guys all the time, like OHL, like for the OHL draft upcoming, I was talking to a couple, um, GMs like OHL GMs. I said, "Hey, because uh, there's a couple names that are supposed to be first. A couple names that are supposed to be first. Well, yeah, that's actually true. There's a, a a couple names like so. There's one that stands out more than that that I've heard more than anything. So I'm, hey, how was you see this guy play a little bit? How's he doing? Yeah, he's good. Is he like surefire? They go, no, no. There's there's this this this. There's like four or five. I'm like, oh, like it's not that clear. So that that hype machine is already first might not go first, exactly. right? And, and the other thing I was going to say is like, even like for myself, knowing a lot of people, let's say I'm talking to uh, whatever team, this guy I'm watching a game with, or he comes out to me after a game and goes, Hey, your kid played a really good game. That doesn't mean he's, he's getting drafted or I really like your kid. He's one scout on a staff of whatever it means nothing. No, 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 that, it, no, it actually doesn't. It doesn't mean something. It means thank you. Thanks for, uh, or my kid should say, thanks for enjoying and watching them. It has nothing to do with me, but that's right. cool. Good to know that's that cool. Somebody Good to know someone something. recognize yeah. him. Cool. It doesn't mean that he's going there. Yeah. You have to understand that right away. Yeah. Because there's a whole team of people that have to like him and say, okay, at this point, we have to. That's who we're going to take. So it's, yeah. it's a long way away. Yeah, for sure. But like from the youth youth point of view, there's 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 those blogs and forums. And it's 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 hilarious, man. When I when I get shown some of these things, it's hilarious. Like people talking about who's your moms and dads and and coaches and and the youth hockey talking about who the who's going, who's the best players, who's socks and all this stuff. And people buy into it. Right. And they, they get involved and they dedicate their life to it and they talk about it. It's, it's unreal. The, the big one for me is the subscription, subscription things. Um, anytime someone's saying, okay, if you want information, just, or if you want to know where you rank and stuff, it costs you 90 bucks or 50 bucks or 10 bucks or two cents, like two cents, two cents, then they, it's, it's not real. Right. Unless it comes from a team, obviously we know that, but I know a lot of people don't, it's, it comes from all these places and people want to, I don't know if they want to believe it, but it's guys, it's just not worth your time. It's not worth your time. It's just hype. The other thing that a, another one that is uh put some gas on the fire, it's not to shit on it, but it's a lot of spring hockey stuff because you get teams that put, they, they put their, try to put super teams together or they make it something that it's not. And then they talk about how the, and they, 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 in these terms, they try to evaluate and say the best of the best they're playing here. And it's like, you don't know who the best of the best is, man. You don't know. So that's another one where they where they start putting gas on the fire. The other one is uh, that when I coach, people always paid attention to it. And I guess it's it's kind of okay, but it's called the My Team Rankings. And it's good. It, it ranks all the teams from the OHL. But like, if you just take, well, one's playing against nine, well, one should win. But the, on any any given day, someone could win or lose. So like the rankings, that's another just form of hype, right? So you you can, said it's for the OHL teams? Is that what you said? No, no, no. Like youth hockey. I thought you said oh you said OHL. You said it ranks for this my one? team ranks OHL teams. That's what you said. I'm sorry. Just I said, clarify. So there's the my youth rankings website. So it's been around for a while, and <laughs> when I coached, people used to check it all the time, and it was actually somewhat useful, like especially if you've never played against a team. But to put your whole 
um, well, let me, I'll explain it. So it ranks whatever league that you're in. You could be in Quebec. You could be in yeah, my hockey rankings, my hockey rankings. Yeah. That's the one. So it'll take whatever level you're playing, triple A, and it'll take one, like they rank them based on, it's a, it's a numerical mathematical equation. And it's, it's actually pretty close, right? So if you, if you, you'll notice that on, on the Ontario rankings, you'll see like usually Toronto Marlies or Toronto junior Canadians are like a number one typically. And then you'll see like a couple of Toronto teams and then a, an Alliance or an Ottawa team, something like that. And then it starts breaking down. So you, but my point of that is like, it's fairly accurate. Um, but then, but you don't want to put your whole stock into the hype of, Oh, number fourth ranked is playing 18th ranked. So we're going to kick their ass because you still have a game to play. So you don't want to get caught in the hype of, uh, of the numbers game in that either. Right. That's all I was saying about that, but it's, it's not, it's, that's one of the things that I think is okay. But then people go, Oh, we're playing number one. They're going to be so great. You would, what can happen is you can make the game bigger than what it is, or you can minimize it. Yeah. And what, one more I'll, I'll mention about the youth hockey stuff. Cause I remember this very clearly. Uh, and then maybe we can get wrapping up is um, either players or coaches that could be coming to be involved with a team. So when I played, I remember some of like the big name coaches of the organization where I played and parents would just like scrap and claw to get one of these guys to coach one of the teams only for me to find out about three years after I'm done youth hockey that this guy's actually not a very good coach. Like not only is he not a very good coach, he's not even a very good person and he doesn't have any kind of real connection into the hockey network at all. But all of those things, it was presented as if he did. Right. And it's like, he was this legit guy. And there was, it's it's not just one. I have three names right at top of mind that I remember from when I was playing youth hockey Whereas like, these are the guys, like you want to have one of these guys as the coach. And so parents would like, there would be like parent mutinies of current coaches to try to get a new coach and all this kind of crazy stuff because they think this guy's better than this guy or players trying to like make trades in youth organizations because we have boundaries here. So you have to try to, you know, finagle your way around that. And just like, I, I remember thinking back on it, like at the time when we were in it, it was like the biggest deal ever. And it like, there was all this drama and all this, um, high expectations, high expectations, the whatever, best right. Best of the best. Imagine. And it wasn't even true. Like it wasn't even true. And the parents were bought in hook, line and sinker. And then all the kids were like, Oh, we're going to get this great coach. And it wasn't a great coach, you know? So that's another thing that you want to watch out for when you're, when you're not, it's, it's, I know it's so hard, man. It's hard to see as the parents, if you're not connected in the, into the greater network of the hockey world, but you have to take everything with some perspective, right? Take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt that it might not be exactly as it seems, especially if you lack experience in hockey, you know, because it's a lot easier to get caught up because it can be exciting, especially if you have a young player, that's pretty good. Or, or there's a lot of, you know, talk about a certain person that's going to come help and whatever. It's like, just take everything with a little perspective because all that stuff is just another version of, of what we've been talking about this whole episode, right? Yeah, you can get bought into all this crap that doesn't actually matter, you yeah. know? So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so like uh, as we're closing up here, like what I would say, like parents, sometimes you don't even know coaches, but how can you help get, how, how, how can you help get not get caught into the hype thing is, is just understand like, if, if people are asking for, <laughs> for money, if people are asking, telling you how great you are and all that kind of stuff, just, you got to ignore it. You got to ignore it. There's, it's such a long road to, to actually get anywhere. Um, and, and then for me, the biggest thing is like, even like we talked about the CHL top prospects game tonight, it's like, it's a big game. It is, it is, but it's not the only game. It's only one thing. And the, the key to doing anything is, is, you know, prepare yourself if you, if you have a goal of being a hockey player or a coach or a coach or a good parent, <laughs> keep, keep everything in perspective and understand that if you prepare every day, right, treat every day like it's the same day. Because whether you're going out for a practice or if you're going out for a game, you should be dialed in and trying to be better than you were yesterday. Um, you want to be competitive and you want to do your best. And if you're going out for a game, that is a championship game or an exhibition game or a preseason game, 
you still want to go out and play your best hockey. It's all the same. So your your pre- preparation to be a hockey player is you should never change. Your the way you execute in hockey should always be intense and every doing things doing things right. And the key is not to make things bigger than what they are, and not to make them smaller than what they are. There's no like to me. There's no such thing as a, a practice that's an important practice. It's every practice. If you're if a player trying to get better or a pro trying to stay in the league, it's an important practice and it's an important workout, and you should be dialed in. And there's no such thing to me as this is a big game because they're all big. If you're if you're playing in the NHL, it's big because you're in the NHL. And it's big because you need a win. And it's big so you can have a job tomorrow. And if you're playing junior or college, it's big because someone's always watching you. It's big because you want your team to win. It's big because um, it's it's a game. Like you're getting scouted. And and if if you don't play well, if you had anything that's not going well, it can affect certain things. But then at the other side, it's not small. It's not the biggest thing in the world either. You're allowed to have a day where it's, uh, you're not your best, but if you prepare the same way every single day for every single thing and the effort's the same and the focus is the same and you stay in the moment and not get w- worried about the hype and all that stuff and focus on what you do, which is I play hockey, then it re- nothing, all the other stuff doesn't matter. And the more that you can understand that you just go about your business every day, then that's how you have some success, right? And if, like, and I'll, I'll go back to like an Arbor Jack guy again. Like, he didn't go to the top prospects game. He didn't go to the All Star games in the OHL. He didn't have the TSN lights and all that stuff. But he's 21 years old, straight out of the Memorial Cup championships in the uh, CHL, straight to the National Hockey League. So he just went about his business and did it every day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Beautiful. Good wrap up, kids. Okay. We'll uh, see you guys next week.